Madam Clerk, if you would please uh, call the roll. Mr. Beard? Present. Mr. Blevins? Mr. Blues? Ms. Crosby? Mr. DeCamp? Mr. Ellinger? Ms. Gorton? Here. Mr. Gray? Ms. Henson? Here. Ms. James? Mr. Lane? Here. Mr. McCord? Here. Mr. Myers? Here. Dr. Stevens? Present. And Mr. Stennett? Thank you. We have a quorum, so we're ready to proceed. It's my pleasure to welcome to the podium Chaplain Dawson from the Fire Department to give our invocation this evening. Before I do that, I want to give an explanation. I don't want to appear to be out of uniform or disrespectful coming in a T-shirt. This is a very special week at the Fire Department. We have a week of giving this week, and this is part of our uniform for the week to wear this shirt. And it's in honor and memory of those who died September the 11th, all those who have served since the families who sacrificed and all this week uh, we've been going above and beyond the call of duty giving to our community and uh, we've uh, given over 200 pints of blood this week and uh, we're going to be able to make a donation to the university of kentucky children's hospital through a run that we put on saturday morning that our fire chief led backwards there's a story behind that that wasn't his fault but we're going to we're going to harass him over it anyway but anyway it's an honor to serve in this community let's pray together Father, we come to you and we thank you, Lord, for this wonderful day that you've given us and, uh, uh, God, the opportunity to live in your creation. And we thank you for the, the, just the simple things, the refreshing rain that we've got today and help us to always be mindful uh, of things that we seem to take for granted so many times. Lord, we come tonight and uh, on this special day, we just want to remember uh, all the families uh, who were affected the most on this day seven years ago. And we just lift them up to you and just ask for extra strength and grace for them uh, as they uh, relive that day and as they remember their loved ones and as they hurt uh, continually. Lord, for all those that have served since, all our soldiers and families who have sacrificed and given so much, we want to remember them and thank you for them and their service and their commitment. Just thank you for what they all represent, the great country that we live in. Lord, we come to you also tonight specifically just asking that uh, your presence be in this place. Uh, God, that these, these leaders of ours who uh, give and sacrifice themselves, uh, God, that you'll just give them wisdom and, and patience and uh, uh, serve an attitude to be able to be the very best that they can be, to do the very best for this community that we live in. And God, we thank you for the citizens and others that are here for, for different reasons, for uh, speaking up and being a part uh, of their community. So God, we just pray that uh, uh, you be here in every way tonight and this be a meeting uh, that benefits us all. We pray all this in your holy and powerful name. Amen. Thank you very much, Chaplain Dawson. Uh, I'll turn the podium over to Council Member Gordon now. Thank you, Mayor. Um, we have kind of an exciting situation here. It's a first for Lexington. It's the first time that Lexington has been, or will be, the book isn't out yet, recognized in the book of Guinness Book of World Records. And it was accomplished by a wonderful group of young folks, some of who are here before you. And they really did it um, not just to play the longest volleyball game in the world, but to serve the community. And I'd like to invite Kayla Powell up to stand with me while I read the commemoration. Kayla was the organizer of the world's longest volleyball game. And it happened about a year ago, August, if I recall. Was it End August? Of July. End, End of, of July. August. And I was one of the public witnesses to get in the Guinness Book of World Records, you have to have witnesses who certify that they did do what they said they did. And so we brought them here tonight to congratulate them. And Kayla's going to tell you what, just briefly, what they did for the community and show a brief clip of their work. These are, I believe, high school and college young the, people. Yes? At the time they were. At the time. <laughs> Okay, world's longest volleyball game commemoration. Whereas, as an intern with the Lexington First Assembly of God, Kayla Powell organized a 55-hour volleyball game that set a new world's record as established by the Guinness Book of World Records for the longest volleyball game 
And whereas the church's children and media pastor, Jeremy White, suggested the project to Ms. Powell and supervised her work, and whereas Ms. Powell's months of work on this project, including completing paperwork for Guinness, coordinating 250 volunteers and recruiting players, was recognized with a Girl Scout Gold Award, which is the equivalent of the Eagle Scout Award for Boy Scouts, on June 1, 2008, and whereas the game also raised a total of $2,300 and collected five carloads of food items that were donated to the Hope Center and the Lighthouse Homeless Shelters, and whereas the game began at 12.30 p.m. Monday, July 30th, 2007, and concluded at 7.30 p.m. Wednesday, August 1st, 2007, and now this is very cool, 8,730 points were scored. Hmm. And whereas the players were Micah Buckle, Josiah Durham, Mark Workman, Audra Buckle, John Turner, Brooke Preston, Tyler Overly, Molly Dietrich, Jeremy White, Kendra White, Kara Laufenberger, Jessica Abner, Isaac Tandy, Mark Laufenberger, Brian Troyer, Becky McGuire, Andrew McCowan, Liz White, and Jeff Boyko, and whereas in January 2008, church members were officially notified by Guinness of their world record status with an official game time of 55 hours and three minutes. Therefore, Jim Newberry, mayor of the Lexington Fayette Urban County Government, commends the organizers and participants in the world's longest volleyball game. And this is signed the 11th day of September, 2008, by Jim, Mer Jim Newberry, our mayor, who is also going to help deliver these commemorations into your hands. So Kayla, congratulations. Thank you. Next one for you. As I read the names, the mayor will, if you'll come up and accept your commemoration. And if you want to get a copy of the book, it's not quite out yet, I understand. So um, it'll be out very soon. Micah Buckle, Josiah Durham, Mark Workman, <laughs> Audra Buckle. <Yay>. <laughs> <laughs> John Turner, Brooke Preston, Tyler Overly, Molly Dietrich, Jeremy White, Kendra White, Carol Offenberger. Jessica Abner, Isaac Tandy, Mark Laufenberger, Brian Troyer, Becky McGuire, Andrew McCowan, Liz White, and Jeff Boyko. So these kids can play volleyball. So let's have a round of applause and then Kayla. Should we do that now? Shall, do we have a photographer in the house? We could do a group picture quickly. Okay, all right, and then we'll see a quick video clip of the world record game.
Monday, we introduced you to a <laughs> Oh, good evening. <laughs> oh, good evening. Um, first of all, I would just like to say what an honor it is for all of us to be here, and thank you so much um, for this. This means a lot to us. Um, and it is absolutely impossible for me to talk about this um, attempt without um, just giving glory to God for how incredible he was throughout this. And um, as she mentioned, there were over 200 volunteers necessary. Um, for this event, and um, not only like do we have to find 200 people willing to give up um, at least you know four hours of their time, um, we couldn't know about 40 of them, so they couldn't know any of us. So it's really hard, you know, to get somebody to come volunteer when you know them. It's really a challenge when you don't know them, and um, so, and then also the way just by the nature of um, Guinness World Records, you have to have these people there. There was we had to have a medical person and witnesses and. If for any reason you don't have a person covering a certain shift at any time, the whole thing's over right then. Um, and we had a couple um, no-shows at times, and God was so good to us just to bring in people when we needed them. And um, just, it's incredible. Um, and the other thing is this team was incredible. I wish you guys could have seen them. Um, about five hours of sleep apiece for 55 hours like working hard and it was not just volleyball it was competitive volleyball <laughs> like it looked good and they were playing to win and um i was so proud of them and i don't know just incredible for us too to have been able to affect the community in such a way um, we raised about five thousand dollars worth of donations um, for two ministries um, two homeless ministries the Lighthouse and the Hope Center, who are both just incredible, incredible um, ministries who are changing lives every day. Um, so it's such an honor for us to get to work with them and um, just increase publicity. And um, it was an incredible, incredible experience. Um, and the other thing, I would just like to thank uh, the community. Like we said, we needed 200 volunteers, and they came. And we needed people to come watch the game and bring donations, and they were there. And uh, just to support the team, it was it meant so much to have the people just there cheering them on. And um, so there were so, so many people. Um, and I'm getting a lot of the credit for this, but there were so many people that helped me organize this event. Um, <laughs> And I mean, the hours that went into this game were unbelievable. I know I spent 420, and my family put in an insane amount of hours. I know Jeremy White and his family put in an insane amount of hours. And um, so there, there were a lot, a lot of people um, that should be getting the credit for this. And um, we're just very honored. So thank you very much. All right. Thank you all very much for joining us this evening. It's a pleasure to have you. You're welcome to stay if you'd like, or if you need to move on, we certainly understand. So have a good evening. 
I have uh, discussed with the clerk, and it seems as though uh, our public hearing might most appropriately come after the second reading of the ordinances. So, Madam Clerk, if you will proceed with that, we'll conduct the public hearing as soon as you complete that task. Ordinance number one, an ordinance levying ad valorem taxes for municipal purposes for the fiscal year July 1, 2008 through June 30, 2009 on the assessed value of all taxable property within the taxing jurisdictions of the Lexington Bay and Urban County Government, all taxes on $100 of assessed valuation as of the January 1, 2008 assessment date as follows. General Services District 0.0800 on real property, including real property of public service companies. 0 0.0990 on personal property, including personal property of public service companies, non-commercial aircraft and non-commercial watercraft. 0 0.1500 on insurance capital. 0 0.0150 on, cap on tobacco and storage and .0450 on agricultural products and storage. Full urban or partial urban services districts based on urban services available on real property, including real property of public service companies. .1590 for refuse collection. .02.1010 for street lights. .0094 for street cleaning. .0920 on insurance capital. .0150 on tobacco and storage. 0 .0450 on agricultural products and storage and levying an ad valorem tax for municipal purposes at the rate of 0 .0880 on each $100 of assessed value on all motor vehicles and watercraft within the taxing jurisdiction of the Lexington Fayette Urban County Government as of the January 1, 2009 assessment date. Number two, an ordinance levying ad valorem taxes for purposes of support of the Soil and Water Conservation District for the fiscal year July 1, 2008 through June 30, 2009 on the assessed value of all taxable real property within the taxing jurisdictions of the Lexington Fayette Urban County Government, including real property of public service companies at a rate of .0004 on each $100 of assessed valuation as of the January 1, 2008 assessment date. Number three, an ordinance pursuant to a request received from the Lexington Fayette County Health Department levying an ad valorem tax for purposes of support of the Lexington Fayette County Health Department for the fiscal year July 1, 2008 through June 30, 2009 on the assessed value of all taxable, real, and personal property within the taxing jurisdiction of the Lexington Fayette Urban County Government, including real and personal property of public service companies, non-commercial aircraft, and non-commercial watercraft, and inventory and transit and excluding insurance capital, tobacco, and storage, and agricultural products and storage at the rate of 0 .028 on each $100 of assessed value as of the January 1, 2008 assessment date and levying an ad valorem tax for purposes of support of the Lexington Fayette County Health Department at the rate of 0 .028 on each $100 of assessed value on all motor vehicles and watercraft within the taxing jurisdiction of the Lexington Fayette Urban County Government as of the January 1, 2009 assessment date. And number four, an ordinance levying an ad valorem tax for purposes of support of the Agricultural Extension Office for the fiscal year July 1, 2008 through June 30, 2009 on the assessed value of all taxable real and personal property within the taxing jurisdiction of the Lexington Fayette Urban County Government, all taxes on each $100 of assessed valuation as of the January 1, 2008 assessment date as follows, 0 .0031 on all taxable real property, including real property of public service companies, 0 .0034 on taxable personal property, including personal property of public service companies, non-commercial aircraft and non-commercial watercraft, and excluding inventory in transit, insurance capital, tobacco in storage, and agricultural products in storage, levying an ad valorem tax for purposes of support in the, of the Agricultural Extension Office at the rate of .0032 on each $100 of assessed value on all motor vehicles and watercraft within the taxing jurisdiction of the Lexington Fayette Urban County Government as of the January 1, 2009 assessment date. We'll now move to the uh, public hearing, and if you'll bear with me just a moment, I will uh, read a little script here. House Bill 44, the 1979 special legislative session, requires the urban county government to provide an opportunity for citizens to make comments about the ad valorem tax rates for the upcoming fiscal year if the proposed rates exceed the compensating rates. The compensating rate is a rate that produces approximately the same amount of revenue that produced as that produced in the preceding year, excluding new property and personal property. A summary of last year's rates, the compensating rates and the proposed rates for FY 2009, along with the corresponding assessments and revenues for the General Services District, the full and partial Urban Services District, the Fayette County Extension Service, and the Fayette County Health Department was published in the Lexington Herald-Leader 
on August 30th, 2008 and September 4, 2008. Copies of the summary are on the table in the back of this room. A public hearing is uh, now in session in accordance with those requirements. Does anyone wish to address the council on this matter? Um, any, any comments from the public? Any comments from the council members? Council Member Gordon. Thank you, Mayor. Um, it did uh, occur to me that um, we regularly get an accounting from Lextran and we regularly get an accounting from the Lexington Public Library. And we have on this tax docket the Soil and Water Conservation District, the Fayette County Health Department, and the Agricultural Extension Office. And I think it would be appropriate for council members to see an accounting of how those tax dollars are used. Those are taxes that the council has put into place over the years. And so um, I just thought I would bring that to the forefront and um, if we need a vote on that I can bring it on Tuesday but I just wanted to say that in public it would be good for us to see how those tax dollars are being used any further comment from the council seeing none we will close the public hearing and a motion to approve those ordinances would be in order Second. I have a motion by Council Member Blues and a second by Council Member Ellinger to approve those rates. Any further discussion? Seeing none, we'll proceed to vote. Those in favor, please indicate by voting aye electronically. Those opposed, vote nay. And Madam Clerk, if you could both reset the machine and call the uh, roll, that would be great. Thank you. Mr. Beard? Aye. Mr. Blevins? Aye. Mr. Blues? Ms. Crosby? Yeah. Mr. DeCamp? Yes. Mr. Ellinger? Yes. Ms. Gorton? Aye. Mr. Gray? Yes. Ms. Henson? Yes. Mr. Ms. James? Mr. Lane? Yes. Mr. McCord? Yes. Mr. Myers? Yes. Dr. Stevens? Aye. And Mr. Stennett? Yes, Thank you very much. Those ordinances are approved. The next item on the agenda is uh, item five. The ordinance is entitled to first reading. Madam Clerk. Ordinance number five, an ordinance accepting the bid of Herrick Company Incorporated and the amount of $248,500 for chlorination equipment replacement for the town branch wastewater treatment plant and appropriating funds pursuant to schedule number 51. Number six, an ordinance accepting the bid of Arrow Electric Company Incorporated and the amount of $710,170 for traffic signal rebuild signalization for a portion of Nicholasville Road for the Division of Traffic Engineering and appropriating funds pursuant to schedule number 53. Number seven, an ordinance authorizing and directing the mayor on behalf of the Urban County Government to execute and submit a grant application to the Kentucky Environmental and Public Protection Cabinet to provide any additional information requested in connection with this grant application and to accept this grant if the application is approved, which grant funds are in the amount of $144,556 Commonwealth of Kentucky funds are for the continuation of the litter control program, the acceptance of which does not obligate the Urban County Government for the expenditure of funds, appropriating funds pursuant to schedule number 42, and authorizing the mayor to transfer unencumbered funds within the grant budget. Number eight, I rest an ordinance authorizing and directing the mayor on behalf of the Urban County Government to accept a grant from the Kentucky Justice and Public Safety Cabinet, which grant funds are in the amount of $60,000 federal funds, are for the operation of a ticketing aggressive cars and trucks grant program, and the acceptance of which obligates the Urban County Government for the expenditure of $15,000 as a local match at appropriating funds pursuant to schedule number 44 and authorizing the mayor to transfer unencumbered funds within the grant budget. Number nine, an ordinance amending ordinance number 261-2007, which authorized and directed the mayor on behalf of the urban county government to execute a reimbursement agreement with C Brothers LLC and Hillenmeyer Properties LLC for developer reimbursement for construction of a sanitary sewer trunk line to increase the cost of construction for construction from $447,780.30 to $553,092.30 and appropriating funds pursuant to schedule number 43. Number Madam, 10. Madam Clerk, let me interrupt uh, for just a moment. I think Dr. Stevens has a motion to bring with regard to item 10. Uh, thank you, Mayor. Uh, since this item was introduced uh, several weeks ago and placed on the docket for tonight, the first reading uh, it has raised a good deal of consternation in our community. I have received uh, many communications uh, 
and information, some true and some false, many arguments, and uh, even pleas. Uh, one citizen has sent me 21 pages of information in four different, uh, on four different days in five different communications. And because of this, and because I think it may be premature to consider this without further consideration in our usual committee system, and for uh, to elucidate the facts and information that relate to this particular change, I would move that it be removed, removed from the docket for consideration at this time and referred to the service committee and to the town and gown commission for further consideration. I have a motion by council member Stevens, a second by council member DeCamp to uh, remove item 10 from the docket and to refer it to the services committee and the town and gown commission. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, we'll, uh, council member James. I just wanted to say thank you. If there's no further discussion, we'll proceed to vote. Those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. Motion carries. Madam Clerk. Uh, let me, let me uh, also say there were several people who had indicated a desire to speak on this particular topic. In light of that decision, it, it will not be considered tonight. If you wish to speak, um, now would probably be an appropriate time to do so. But if you wish to talk to the Services Committee or the Town Gown Commission, we can hear your comments at that time as well. Okay. Then let's proceed. Madam Clerk. Ordinance number 11, an ordinance authorizing and directing the mayor on behalf of the Auburn County government to accept a grant from the Kentucky De Department of Juvenile Justice, which grant funds are on the amount of $44,619. Commonwealth of Kentucky funds are for support of juvenile delinquency prevention programming, the acceptance of which does not obligate the Auburn County government for the expenditure of funds and further authorizing and directing the mayor to execute an agreement with Crony and Clark Incorporated for the Truancy Reduction Initiative at a cost not to exceed $44,619 appropriating funds pursuant to schedule number 52 and authorizing the mayor to transfer unencumbered funds within the grant budget. Number 12, an ordinance authorizing and directing the mayor on behalf of the Urban County Government to execute supplemental agreement number two with, the, with and to accept a grant from the Kentucky Transportation Cabinet which grant funds are on the amount of $770,000 federal funds are for the utilities phase of the Clays Mill Road Improvement Project, the acceptance of which obligates the Urban County Government for the expenditure of $192,500 as a local match, appropriating funds pursuant to Schedule Number 49 and authorizing the Mayor to transfer unencumbered funds within the grant budget. Number 13, an ordinance authorizing and directing the Mayor on behalf of the Urban County Government to execute Supplemental Agreement Number 5 with and to accept a grant from the Kentucky Transportation Cabinet which grant funds are in the amount of $255,486 federal funds, are for the design $11,486, right-of-way acquisition $152,000, and utilities $92,000, phases of the Richmond Road multi-use path project, the acceptance of which obligates the Urban County Government for the expenditure of $194,472, including for the construction phase as a local match, appropriating funds pursuant to Schedule Number 48, excuse me, and authorizing the mayor to transfer unencumbered funds within the grant budget. Number 14, an ordinance amending certain of the budgets of the Lexington and Fayette Urban County Government to reflect current requirements of mu for municipal expenditures and appropriating and reappropriating funds, schedule number 40. Thank you very much. That uh, mayor, I believe. Yes, Council Member James. Um, the clerk has um, yielded to me for just a moment to uh, make sure that the administration is prepared to deal, to talk about, or uh, share with us the UDAG information towards the end of the meeting. Yes. Okay. Thank you very much. Ordinance number 15, an ordinance authorizing payment in the amount of $1,408,100 to Kinzelman Klein Gossman LLC pursuant to the agreement authorized by resolution number 579, 2007 for the design of sidewalks and streetscape improvements for the downtown area and appropriating funds pursuant to schedule number 47. Number 16, an ordinance amending section 21-52 of the code of ordinances abolishing one position of staff assistant grade 107N and creating one position of landfill inspector grade 108N in the division of waste management and appropriating funds pursuant to schedule number 45. 
Number 17, an ordinance amending section 21-5, subsection 2 of the Code of Ordinances, abolishing one position of telecommunicator senior, grade 113N, and creating one position of administrative specialist principal, grade 114E, in the Division of Emergency Management 911, and appropriating funds pursuant to schedule number 46. Number 18, an ordinance amending section 8 of ordinance uh, number 183, 2008, to the correct the authorized strength for the positions of engineering technician, grade 111N, skilled trades worker senior, grade 112N, and public service worker, grade 106N, and amending section 10 of ordinance number 183, 2008, to correct a division line number and amending section 12 of ordinance number 183, 2008, transferring the incumbents for certain positions for the Division of Fire and Emergency Services to the Division of Facilities and Fleet Management, retroactive to July 8, 2008, and number 19. An ordinance authorizing and directing the mayor on behalf of the urban county government to accept donations totaling $475 from Mr. and Mrs. C.B. Lovell III, Dr. Robert H. Spedding, Mr. and Mrs. E.T. Dillander, Mr. Richard, Richard E. Beemont, Dr. and Mrs. Rayner Mullins, Dr. Mary T. Unra, Ms. Janet D. Ellinger, and Ms. Edna Land Naylor, in memory of Ms. Hilda Ecton, to be used exclusively for improvements to Ecton Park and appropriating funds pursuant to Schedule Number 50. Thank you very much. If there are no motions with regard to those ordinances, we'll proceed to the resolutions entitled to second reading. Madam Clerk. Resolution number one, a resolution authorizing and directing the mayor on behalf of the urban county government to execute an agreement with the Fayette County Commonwealth Attorney's Office for a fast track prosecutor for the street sales enforcement project at a cost not to exceed $49,331. Number two, a resolution authorizing and directing the mayor on behalf of the urban county government to execute an agreement with Fayette County Board of Education for use of Bryan Station High School Auditorium at a cost not to exceed $159.75. Number three, a resolution authorizing and directing the mayor on behalf of the urban county government to execute a software license agree agreement with New World Systems Corporation for software licensing of 50 mobile data computers at a cost not to exceed $91,500. Number four, a resolution authorizing and directing the mayor on behalf of the urban county government to execute a lease agreement with Thoroughbred Hospitality, LLC, for lease of a cart barn at a cost not to exceed $30,000 with future yearly payments subject to sufficient funds being appropriated in future fiscal years by the urban county council. Number five, a resolution authorizing and directing the mayor on behalf of the urban county government to execute agreements with Georgetown Street Neighborhood Association Incorporated, $1,350, Lexington Art League Incorporated, $1,200, NAMI, Lexington, Kentucky Incorporated, $850. Central Kentucky Hospital Foundation Incorporated, $1,900. Lexington Humane Society, $250. Highlands Neighborhood Association Incorporated, $400. And Russell Cave Church of Christ Incorporated, $600 for the Office of the Urban County Council at a cost not to exceed the sums stated. Number six, a resolution pursuant to Code of Ordinances, Section 18-66, designating the speed limit on Old Vine Street as 25 miles per hour and authorizing and directing the Div Division of Traffic Engineering to install a pro proper and appropriate signs in accordance with the designation. And number seven, a resolution amending Section 2 of Resolution Number 294-2008 relating to the Neighborhood Development Fund Program to change the amount of the allocation to Independence Place Incorporated from $600 to $500. That completes the reading of the ordinances entitled to second reading. Is there a motion they be approved? Move approval. I have a motion by Council Member Gordon and a second by Council Member Myers that those resolutions be approved. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, we'll proceed to vote. Those in favor, please vote aye electronically. Those opposed, please vote no. Madam Clerk, please call the roll. Mr. Beard? Aye. Mr. Blevins? Aye. Mr. Blues? Yes. Ms. Crosby? Yes. Mr. DeCamp? Yes. Mr. Ellinger? Yes. Ms. Gorton? Yes. Mr. Gray? Yes. Ms. Henson? Yes. Ms. James? Mr. Lane? Yes. Mr. McCord? Yes. Mr. Myers? Yes. Dr. Stevens? Aye. <laughs> Mr. Stinnett? Thank you. Those resolutions are approved. That takes us now to the resolutions entitled to first reading. Madam Clerk. Resolution number eight, a resolution accepting the bid of Watermark Construction LLC in the amount of $185,502.70 for the Town Branch Trail Phase Two construction for the Division of Engineering. Number nine, a resolution accepting the bid of Visual Image Systems, establishing a price contract for reflective vehicle decals for the Division of Police. 
Number 10, a resolution accepting the bids of Aurora Safety Corporation, Bluegrass Fire Equipment, and Bluegrass Uniforms Incorporated, establishing price contracts for wildland firefighting equipment for the Division of Fire and Emergency Services. Number 11, a resolution accepting the bid of Logan Security Incorporated, establishing a price contract for Gainesway Community Center Security for the Department of General Services. Number 12, a resolution accepting the bids of Environmental Resources Incorporated, Superior Demolition Incorporated, and Solid Walk Solid Rock Construction Services, establishing price contracts for the demolition of residential structures for the Division of Engineering. Number 13, a resolution authorizing and directing the mayor on behalf of the Urban County Government to execute and submit a grant application to the Environmental Protection Agency and to provide any additional information requested in connection with this grant application, which grant funds are in the amount of $220,000 federal funds and are for the Empowering Lexington to Use Power Wisely project. Number 14, a resolution authorizing and directing the mayor on behalf of the Urban County Government to execute an agreement with Marriott Griffin Gate Resort and Spa for the Crime Analyst, Analyst Symposium at a cost not to exceed $2,263. Number 15, a resolution authorizing and directing the mayor on behalf of the Urban County Government to execute an agreement with U.S. Geological Survey for the continuing and ongoing maintenance and operation of existing stream flow and precipitation gauges at a cost not to exceed $86,910. Number 16, a resolution authorizing and directing the mayor on behalf of the Urban County Government to execute an agreement with MASH Services of the Bluegrass Incorporated for operation of the MASH drop-in facility at a cost not to exceed $173,458 in grant funds for the U from the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services. Number 17, a resolution authorizing and directing the mayor on behalf of the Urban County Government to execute an engineering services agreement with Stantec Consulting Services Incorporated for the sanitary sewer assessment for Group 1 sewer sheds field activity required by the consent decree at a cost not to exceed $5,297,896.10. Number 18, a resolution authorizing and directing the mayor on behalf of the Urban County Government to execute a standard software maintenance agreement with New World Systems Corporation for software maintenance support at a cost not to exceed $240,369. Number 19, a resolution authorizing and directing the mayor on behalf of the Urban County Government to execute agreements with William Wells Neighborhood Association Incorporated, $150. American Cancer Society Incorporated $50, Mothers of the Earth United Incorporated $205, Owl Foundation Incorporated $125, Martin Luther King Neighborhood Association Incorporated $250, and American Lung Association of Kentucky Incorporated $700 for the Office of the Urban County Council at a cost not to exceed the sums stated. 20. A resolution authorizing and directing the mayor on behalf of the Urban County Government to execute change order number one to the contract with Strand Associates Incorporated for the solid waste expansion project, increasing the contract price by the sum of $44,504 from $408,600 to $453,104. Number 21. A resolution authorizing and directing the mayor on behalf of the Urban County Government to execute a certificate of consideration and accept a deed conveying a permanent sanitary sewer and temporary construction easements from DDD and WLLC for the property located at 4615 Nicholasville Road for the South Elkhorn Force Main Project and authorizing payment in the amount of $13,500 plus usual and appropriate closing costs. Number 22, a resolution authorizing and directing the mayor on behalf of the Urban County Government to execute a certificate of consideration and accept a deed conveying permanent sanitary sewer and temporary construction easements from Cassidy Limited Partnership to for property located at 5170 Harrodsburg Road for the South Elkhorn Force Main Project and authorizing payment in the amount of $12,000 plus usual and appropriate closing to the costs. 23, a resolution authorizing and directing the mayor on behalf of the Urban County Government to execute a certificate of consideration and accept a deed conveying permanent sanitary sewer and temporary construction easements from Jeanette Germain, Christopher Germain, and Logan Germain for property located at 2725 Brandon Road for the South Elkhorn Force Main Project and authorizing payment in the amount of $10,900 plus usual and appropriate closing costs. Number 24. A resolution ratifying the probationary civil service appointments of David Windling, Equipment Operator Senior, Grade 109N, 12.841 hourly in the Division of Water Quality, effective September 15, 2008. Daryl Baker, Equipment Operator Senior, Grade 109N, 18.664 hourly in the Division of Waste Management, effective September 15, 2008. Theresa Sanders, Equipment Operator Senior, Grade 109N, 13.774 hourly in the Division of Waste Management, effective September 15, 2008. Winford Lewis, Equipment Operator Senior, Grade 109N, 18.664 hourly in the Division of Waste Management, effective September 1, 2008. 
Jill Wilson, Recreation Specialist, Senior Grade 113 E, 1655-68, bi-weekly in the Division of Parks and Recreation, effective September 15, 2008. Jacqueline Phelps, Administrative Specialist, Senior Grade 112 N, 16.120, hourly in the Department of Environmental Quality, effective September 15, 2008. Ratifying the Permanent Civil Service Appointments of Robert Pogue, GIS Specialist, Grade 114 N, in the Division of Computer Services, effective April 1, 2008. Ratifying the probationary sworn appointments of Jeremy Whitley, Fire Lieutenant, Grade 315 N, 16.261 hourly in the Division of Fire and Emergency Services, effective September 1, 2008. Kenneth Raglan, Fire Captain, Grade 316 N, 21.497 hourly in the Division of Fire and Emergency Services, effective September 1, 2008. Sean Brown, Fire Major, Grade 318 E, 3381, 38 bi weekly in the Division of Fire and Emergency Services, effective September 1, 2008. Probationary Community Corrections Appointments, Stanley Anderson, Calvin Bennett, Jessica Bradley, David Bryan, Amy Burt Bunton, Cornette, Kimberly Campbell, Christopher Cantor, Henry Caudill, Stephanie Doss, Robert Dunn, Paula Gaines, John Girardi, Trent Gross, James Harmon, Alfred Harris, Adam Hires, Michelle Hunt, Daniel Keeling, Kevin Lawson, Jesse Little, Scott McCracken, Daniel Pedigo, Heather Ray, Ann Schultz, Rochelle Walker, Community Corrections Officer, Grade 110N, 13.930 hourly in the Division of Community Corrections, effective September 2, 2008. Permanent Community Corrections Appointments of Paul Ogio, Community Corrections Officer, Grade 110N, the Division of Community Corrections, effective August 20, 2008. Wendy Amberg, Matthew Crawford, Jason Durham, Tanya Fairchild, William Green, Daryl Maggard, Lavoidis, Meadows, Sean Norman, Wendell, Randolph Parker, Michael Rowe, Melody Shropshire, uh, Michael Weller, Todd Young, Community Corrections Officer, Grade 110 and the Division of Community Corrections, effective September 3rd, 2008. Approving leave of absence for Lori Van Overseeker, Probation Officer, Juvenile, Grade 112 and the Division of Youth Services, requests a 20-day council approved leave without pay from September 4th, 2008 through September 23rd, 2008. Bonnie Miracle, Social Services Supervisor, Grade 115E in the Division of Youth Services, requests a 60-day council approved leave without pay from August 22, 2008 through August 20th, October 20th, 2008. Shalonda Holiday, Administrative Specialist, Grade 110N in the Division of Police, requests a 90-day council approved leave without pay from August 1, 2008 to October 29, 2008. Approving unclassified civil service appointment of Ricky Caldwell, Administrative Officer, Grade 118E, 2008 bi biweekly. In the Department of General Services, effective September 8, 2008, Marie D, Staff Assistant Senior, Grade 108N, 11.252 hourly in the Division of Water Quality, effective September 20, September 1, 2008. 25, a resolution authorizing and directing the mayor on behalf of the Irvine County Government to execute a purchase of service agreement with Simon and Company, Incorporated for services related to federal matters and funding as provided as further provided in the 2008-2009 work plan at a cost not to exceed $39,000. 26, a resolution authorizing and directing the mayor on behalf of the Urban County Government to execute a purchase of service agreement with Blue & Company, LLC, for a comprehensive financial audit for the Division of Family Services Health Care Clinic at the Family Care Center at a cost not to exceed $47,500. 27, a resolution authorizing and directing the mayor on behalf of the Urban County Government to execute a mental health services agreement with Bluegrass Regional Mental Health Mental Retardation Board, Incorporated for court-ordered mental health evaluations of clients referred to the Division of Youth Services at a cost not to exceed $2,500. 28, a resolution authorizing and directing the mayor on behalf of the Urban County Government to execute an affiliation agreement with the University of Kentucky for its UK health care programs for paramedic clinical training at no cost to the Urban County Government. 29, a resolution authorizing and directing the mayor on behalf of the Urban County Government to execute a revised group sales agreement with Hyatt Regency Lexington for the Bluegrass Invitational Wheelchair Basketball Tournament at no cost to the Urban County Government. Number 30, a resolution authorizing and directing the mayor on behalf of the Urban County Government to execute a renewed agreement with affiliate of affiliation with Bluegrass Crime Stoppers Incorporated for services and assistance at no cost to the Urban County Government. Number 31, a resolution authorizing and directing the mayor on behalf of the Urban County Government to execute an engineering services agreement with Carmen for design services or construction of water quality improvements at McConnell Springs at a cost not to exceed $76,800. 32, a resolution authorizing and directing the mayor on behalf of the Urban County Government to execute an engineering and demolition services agreement with Judy Construction Company for repair of clarifier number eight at the West Hickman Creek Wastewater Treatment Plant at a cost not to exceed $156,917. Number 33, a resolution authorizing and directing the mayor on behalf of the Urban County Government to execute an agreement with W.S. Farish and the Carnegie Center Literacy Center Incorporated and the Board of Trustees of the Lexington Public Library 
for funding of the Carnegie Center at a cost not to exceed $36,000. 34, a resolution authorizing and directing the mayor on behalf of the Auburn County Government to execute an agreement with the Open Gates Neighborhood Association, $750 for the Office of the Urban County Council at a cost not to exceed the sum stated. Number 35, a resolution approving a form lease for lease of horses from the Friends of the Lexington Mounted Police Incorporated and authorizing and directing the mayor on behalf of the Urban County Government to execute such leases with the Friends of the Lexington Mounted Police Incorporated on an as needed, on an as -needed basis. 36, a resolution authorizing and directing the mayor on behalf of the Urban County Government to execute a lease agreement with Employment Solutions Incorporated for East Sector Roll Call Facility beginning July 1, 2008 for a term of five years, subject to sufficient funds being appropriated in subsequent fiscal years at a cost not to exceed $2,812 per month. Number 37, a resolution authorizing and directing the Division of Traffic Engineering pursuant to Code of Ordinances Section 18-86 to install multi-way stop controls at Starshoot Parkway and Pink Pigeon Parkway. Number 38, a resolution approving the report of, an audit of the audit examination of the Lexington Fayette Urban County Government Sheriff's Settlement 2007 taxes for taxes collected as of the April 24th, 2008 and granting the sheriff a quietus. Madam Clerk, I'd like to interrupt for just a moment so that uh, Council Member Myers has a motion to understand. Thank you, Mayor. I move to uh, amend resolution 39 to include October 14th at 6 o'clock p.m. for the scheduled public hearing. So moved. Have a motion and second to amend item 39 by adding October 14, 2008 at 6 p.m. as the time for the public hearing. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, those in favor, please vote aye. Opposed, no. Motion carries. Mayor, um, who seconded that, please? Councilmember Stennett. And I uh, also understand there are some individuals who wish to speak to this particular issue. Um, if there's no objection, now might be an appropriate time for them to do so. Um, I do not have a list, but uh, if you are interested in speaking on item 39, if you would please step to the podium and give us your name and address, and you'll have three minutes. Mr. Mayor, members of council, my name is Jamie Millard. I'm president and CEO of the Lexington History Museum. We're located at 215 West Main Street uh, in what we refer to as the new Lexington History Center. Uh, I'm not going to take too much of your time tonight because you've heard my statements and sentiments before, but I just want to remind every council member that this is a process. And nothing in this resolution says that we do or do not do anything without at least allowing the public input to the process that took place over the summer with the delegation, as well as to look at the individual projects that have been, been included on the list and to develop a an understanding of their relative merit uh, and, and uh, importance to our community. This morning, the United States Congress held hearings about the importance of museums and libraries to quality of life, to strong families, and to the quality of the overall community. And a point that was made was that whereas libraries typically are free and open to the public, museums would love to be but can't because of economic factors and need to charge admission. Our museum is one of the very few museums in the country that does not charge admission. And we get by at the good grace of this government uh, to have the, the space inside the building uh, uh, as far as maintenance, utilities, and so forth. But we still require public support, and that support is growing in a declining economy. Our contributions and numbers of donors are up substantially over a year ago, same period. So we know we're viable to this community. We know we're providing a service to this community. We want an opportunity to be heard by this council how important our mission and our programs are to families, to children, to grandparents, to visitors. We help explain what makes this place so unique to the world. So let the process move forward. Let's discuss the projects on their own merits. How they get paid for may be saved for another day, but I urge you to have the hearing and to let's understand what these projects are and the importance of the community. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Millard. Mr. Dalton.
Thank you, Mayor. Robert Dalton, 520 Douglas Avenue. Um, I was here tonight because I was under the understanding, at least from the paper, that they'd be talking about the center point, you know, with the TIF, and my remarks are basically geared towards that. This isn't just about the proposed center point TIF, but also about credibility, and that's the credibility of the city and those who government, namely the mayor and the city council. The majority of council members approved of election applying for TIF and regarded the center point project, but I do not believe that center point meets the criteria for TIF funding. My understanding of KRS Chapter 65.7071 says that an outside consultant or financial advisor will analyze data related to the project and make a determination to include that, quote, the project will not occur if not for the designation of the development area, the granting of incremental revenues by the taxing district or districts other than the Commonwealth, and the granting of the state tax increment revenues, unquote. Additionally, the law reads in KRS 65.7077, paragraph 2, quote, state participants under this program shall be limited to the support of approved public infrastructure costs and costs associated with land preparation, demolition, and clearance determined to be necessary to support private investment or private development projects that benefit the public where project economics are unable, unable to support or secure necessary financing to undertake the public improvements land preparation, demolition, and clearance, unquote. I believe the web company have already stated that they can do the project with it, the city. So under this case, TIF does not qualify. I believe if this council moves forward and supports this action, which I don't think it qualifies under, then as representatives of the city, I believe you will lose credibility with the Commonwealth. Perhaps I, the next time you submit a request for aid from the Commonwealth, they're going to scrutinize it because you've already shown that you will apply for any type of financial aid, regardless of whether the project qualifies or not. We are a major metropolitan center in Kentucky, and we need to use better judgment. Lastly, I personally disagree with how Center Point is laid out now. $300 a night rooms, high-end retail shopping, I think beyond the world equestrian games in two years, how much business are they really going to get out of it? I know that I can't afford to go there. Thank you. Thank you, and Mr. Moore, I understand you wish to speak, and Ms. Uh, Bayer, is that correct? You wish to yield three minutes to Mr. Moore? So you'll have six minutes, Mr. Moore. Thank you, Eric Patrick Moore, 4165 Hartwood Road, and I came with prepared remarks tonight, Let's see if I can do better. Regarding the Never Say Die center point and contiguous TIF district discussions, I hope these might be my final comments. Albert Camus, the French author, philosopher, and Nobel Prize winner, may have said it best. Greatness consists in trying to be great. There is no other way. Per that, I don't believe our issue here is TIF or no TIF. Of course, everyone wants any and all extra revenue and to keep our revenues here within our city. Councilman DeCamp said it best in one of the very first TIF delegation, delegation meetings when he basically said, we'd be fools not to capture all the revenue we can. Yet on Tuesday, he voted against this particular TIF district. Councilman Myers then asked, how can that be? Now that is an intriguing question. In fact, of the seven delegation members on Tuesday, four of them voted against this particular TIF project. If you also count Councilwoman James and Gordon, who also attended the meetings frequently, six out of nine meeting attendees voted against it. If you also count Councilman Blevins, who also attended at least one of the meetings, Seven, the seven against votes all came from people who were involved in the process on the inside. That is quite telling. And its meaning is plainly obvious. Something is wrong somewhere. It is because this issue is not TIF or no TIF, center point or no center point, like this argument keeps focusing on. Focusing on either yes or no misses the true conversation everyone wishes we would have. The issue is how can Lexington be great? The issue is that center point really make Lexington the very best it can be as an entire city, people, culture, economy, and otherwise. Fundamentally, we're talking about building an entire city the right way, not just any old way. Again, the question is how. So my beloved Lexingtonians, the voting is not for TIF or against TIF. TIF. The voting is for the greatest Lexington possible or for more of the same. It is government's job and government's ordained responsibility to build our city to be the very best it can be for the people. What we are really talking about here is not building a city block or this small TIF district, relatively small, but building an entire city for its overall greatness for lifetimes to come. 
voicing disapproval for Centerpoint and or the corresponding TIF district is not voting against Lexington's great development and evolution. That would be silly. It is voting against this particular process that is ultimately creating more mediocrity in our Lexington that has always kept people like me and my peers who've all left and Councilman McCord's beautiful young daughter from competing globally. Voicing disapproval is not rejecting tax revenues. It is rejecting this arguably in inadequate usage of our space and tax dollars. The, the mediocrity and seemingly self-interest that has shaped Lexington's landscape for all of my life and assumably before then, assumably before then. If you have an empty city block in the heart of our city, it is your job as government to build that block, that district, and our entire city to be the absolute very best it can be so that we can all benefit, all gain, all compete globally in this global economy. That is your job, if nothing else, to build our city to be the greatest it can be, serving all of our people. Voting against this is simply saying this particular process, this particular development, this particular project is not the best we can do, and therefore we must go back to the drawing board and stay there until we get it right. In 2050, the 2010 equestrian games will only be in history books. But what stands in this downtown in the long run will matter, and it will matter a lot. By allowing this project to continue, you are saying that this is the very best we can do, or you are saying that you are powerless to do any better. You are saying that you as a government are powerless towards self-interest, that quote unquote is a free country and people can do what they want to do with their property, as one councilman stated on Tuesday. Yet we toy, toy with minuscule laws telling homeowners that they cannot use their profit property for temporary parking spaces for UK football games. Sort of changing the rules in the middle of the game of their home ownership, as Newberry's email once said. Furthermore, Councilman McCord accurately pointed out, we now have the historical opportunity to redraw downtown and our city. I would only ask that we try to be great, as I know he and all of us desire. Continuing, Mayor Newberry's emails to the public and to people said, I do not consider it to be a perfect development, but on balance there has never been any doubt in my mind that the best interests of Lexington are served by the completion of Centerpoint. So a flawed development, development is best for Lexington, and you never had any doubts it is for ever, in everyone's best interest when Lexingtonians by the thousands are saying otherwise? No doubt at all. I find that a little baffling. So then the question becomes, if the current Centerpoint project in corresponding TIF district is not the very best, very greatest idea for Lexington's true long-term success, then what might be an example of what is, so we can compare apples to apples? Well, as it turns out, we just so happen to have an example of true greatness right in front of our eyes in a very similar project in cost, even larger geographically, the downtown distillery district, Me needing even more money for better roads, utilities, sewers, and buildings, and is quite clearly one of the greatest ideas to ever be born in our city. The Burby Museum's truly affordable mixed uses Tourist magnetism and green trails and riverbanks is obviously a demonstration of true greatness, of, at the very least, trying to be great. I know if I visited my friend Jessica's original hometown of Athens, Ohio, I would not be terribly impressed with a tall hotel downtown, but she had a really cool mecca of culture I would remember and tell my friends about it. With all that said, I know the web companies have the slogan of developing tomorrow's landmarks. I wish that this process was trying to be great to truly make Lexington a landmark in the historical landscape of the globe, where people all over the universe think of Lexington as great. Thank you so much. Thank you, Mr. Marr. Is there anyone else who wishes to address this issue? All right, Madam Clerk. Resolution 39 as amended, a resolution directing the preparation of a development plan for the Phoenix Park Courthouse development area, which includes all recommendations of the delegation established pursuant to resolution number 434, 2008, and scheduling a public hearing thereon on October 14, 2008, at 6 p.m. Number 40, a resolution authorizing and directing the mayor, directing the vice mayor on behalf of the urban county government to appoint a task force to assist in determining the location, siting, and design of a new facilities to house the current downtown operations of the urban county government, including the preparation of any requests for proposals to perform such work. Number 41, a resolution changing the street name and property addresses numbers of 3685, 3687, 3689, 3691, 3693, 3695, and 3697 River Park Drive to suites 119, 120, 121, 122, 123, 124, and 125 Trent Boulevard, 991 Todd's Road to 919 McClanahan Lane, 1420 Todd's Road to 2885 Rio Dosa Drive, 
2940 Todd's Road to 2700 Palumbo Drive, 3061 Todd's Road to 626 Caden Lane, 3105 Todd's Road to 2985 Liberty Road, 3109 Todd's Road to 2997 Liberty Road, 3280 Todd's Road to 203 Forest Hill Drive, 644 Forest Hill Drive to 664 Golf Town Circle, 2500 Flying Ebony Drive to 2789 Liberty Road, 2801 Richmond Road to 200 Old Todd's Road, and 639 Dodge Street to 179 Payne Street. Change in the property address numbers of 1273, 1275, 1277, 1279, 1281, 1283, 1285, 1287, 1289, 1291, 1293, 1295, 1297, 1299, 1301, 1303, 1305, 1307, 1309, 1311, 1313, and 1315 Trent Boulevard to 1325 Trent Boulevard Suites, 103, 102, 101, 104, 105, 106, 107, 108, 109, 110, 111, 112, 113, 114, 115, 116, 117, 118, 128, 22887 Richmond Road and changing the street name of 2838 2852 2922 2926 2930 2933 2935 2937 2939 2941 2943 2945 2947 2949 2950 2951 2953 2955 2957 2959 2963 2968 2981 and 2986 liberty road 2 2838 2852 2922 2926 2930 2933 2935 2937 2939 2941, 2943, 2945, 2947, 2949, 2950, 2951, 2953, 2955, 2957, 2959, 2963, 2968, 2981, and 2986 Caden Town Road. And 150, 162, 162 Suites, 110, 150, 120, 240, 260, and 280, 163, 209 Suites, 1101, 1102-2101, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2102-2102, 2
known as the Julia R. Ewan Elementary School property to the Board of Education of Fayette County, Kentucky in consideration of the payment in full of school building revenue bonds issued by the Urban County Government for the construction of improvements to said property. Number 43, a resolution specifying the intention of the Urban County Council to expand and extend partial urban services district number three to provide garbage and refuse collection, finding a need for this service in the area included and finding the ability of the Urban County Government to provide this service in this area, which area is defined as certain properties on the following streets. Sharkey Property Unit 2C, Section 1, Townley Park, Lexingtonian Estates, Section 2, Winter Circle. Sharkey Park Property Unit 2C, Section 2, Town Square Park, Lockmere Estates, Maple Ridge Unit 1A, Lockmere Paloop. Lockmere Place, Hegby Mills Reserve, Reserve Road, Lexingtonian Estates, Section 1, Versailles Road, Winter's Circle, Richmond Woods, Todd's Road, Newtown Springs Unit 1, Lot 9, Russell Springs Drive, Newtown Springs Drive, Hamburg Place Farm, B6P Area, War Admiral Way, and number 44. A resolution specifying the intention of the Urban County Council to expand and extend the full urban service district to provide street lighting, street cleaning, and garbage and refuse collection, finding a need for these services in the area included, finding the ability of the Urban County Government to provide these services in this area, which area is defined as certain properties on the following streets. Johnson Property Unit 1I, Burgess Avenue, Millbank Road, McCullough Drive, Johnson Property Unit 1H, Millbank Road, McCullough Drive, Ramsey Sullivan Property Unit 2A, Sullivan's Trace, Cherry Blossom Way, Blackford Property, Phase 3, Unit 1D, Blackford Pro Parkway, Masterson Hills, Unit 1A, Our Tibbs Trail, Chesapeake Equine, Greendale Road, Ritt Station, Subdivision, Lakelet Avenue, Millican Property, Shady Hills, Tree Line Way, Clark Property, Unit 1L, Ice House Way, Sharkey Property, Unit 3, Section 1, Town Center Drive, Town Square Park, Guest Property, Unit 5C, Section 1, Honeycomb Trail, Guest Property, Unit 4H, Section 1, Jewett Creek Drive, Tuscany, Unit 4C, Summerfield, Battery Street, Blackford Property, Phase 3, Unit 1C, Blackford Pro Parkway, Dyer Cove, Flint Cove, Clark Property uh, Unit 1H, Ice House Way, Clark Property Unit 1I, Orchard Grass Road, Clark Property Unit 1J, Tollgate Road, Orchard Grass Road, Ramsey Sullivan Property Unit 3, Lot 3, Section 2, Kitten Joy Circle, Meadow Sweet Lane, Kearney Ridge Boulevard, Tuscany Unit 4B, Summerfield, Patchen Wilkes Drive, Sandhurst Cove, Jan Johnson Property Unit 1M, Bil Millbank Road, Ever Elverton Road, Johnson Property Unit 1N, Section 1, Elverton Court, Elverton Road, Myers Property Unit 1C, Field Rush Road, Myers Property Unit 1B, Field Rush Road, Calendula Cal Road, Crocus Court, Myers Property Unit 1A, Calendula Road, Field Rush Road, Service Berry Drive, Tuscany Unit 4A, Summerfield, Whitpatchen, Wilkes Drive, Clark Property Unit 1F, Polo Club Boulevard, Pokeberry Park, Old Howells Head Lane, Fortune Business Center Unit 1, Lot 11, Beasley Street, Clark Property Unit 1G, Polo Club Boulevard, Ice House Way, Johnson Property Unit 1L, Section 1, Mill Bank Road. Thank you, Madam Clerk. That concludes the resolutions entitled to first reading. Are there any motions? Councilmember Blevins. Thank you, Mayor. We have a, a need for a second reading on number 17. I'd like to make a motion to suspend the rules for a second reading of number 17 for the purposes of getting this contract underway for the consent decree implementation. So Se moved. Second. Thank you. We have a second by Councilmember Stevens. Councilmember Blues. Mayor, I'd like to add number 31, number 32, and number 35 at the request of the administration. I'm sorry, could you repeat those? Yes, 31, 32, 35. I'd be glad to provide further details on request. Thank you. Uh, Councilmember Gordon. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I request second reading on number 26 so that this audit can go ahead and proceed. Second. Uh, Councilmember Stennett. Thank you, Mayor. I request number 37. Um, so we can get the Starship Parkway traffic calming installed. And then also, uh, I hate to do this, Susan, but number 41, we have a couple of streets without names. We need the Cane Town name to get up there on the street. So it's all part of the Liberty Road opening. And then number 40. Thank you, Mayor. Good news is we don't have to deal with it next week, right? That's right. All right. Council Member DeCamp. Uh, I'd like to add to that number 33 so we can get that money to the Carnegie Center as soon as possible. 
Any others? Then I'll entertain all of that as a motion to suspend the rules for purposes of giving second reading to the following items. 17, 26, 31, 32, 33, 35, 37, 40, 41. Were there any others? All right. Any discussion? Those in favor of suspending the rules to give second reading to those items, please indicate by saying aye. aye. Opposed, no. Motion carries. Madam Clerk. Resolution number 17. I think council member Stenet ought to help me with the beat on that one resolution so I can, <laughs> sorry. Uh, number 17, a resolution authorizing and directing the mayor on behalf of the urban county government to execute an engineering services agreement with Stantec Consulting Services Incorporated for the sanitary sewer assessment for group one sewer sheds field activity required by the con consent decree at a cost not to exceed $5,297,896.10. Number 26, a resolution authorizing and directing the mayor on behalf of the urban county government to execute a purchase of service agreement with Blue and Company LLC for a comprehensive financial audit for the Division of Family Services Health Care Clinic at a family care center at a cost not to exceed $47,500. Number 31, a resolution authorizing and directing the mayor on behalf of the urban county government to execute an engineering services agreement with Carmen for design services for construction of water quality improvements at McConnell Springs at a cost not to exceed $76,800. 32, a resolution authorizing and directing the mayor on behalf of the urban county government to execute an engineering and demolition services agreement with Judy Construction Company for repair of clarifier number eight at the West Hickman Creek Westwater Treatment Plant at a cost not to exceed $156,917. Number 33, a resolution authorizing and directing the mayor on behalf of the Urban County Government to execute an agreement with W.S. Farish for the Carnegie Literacy Center Incorporated and the Board of Trustees of the Lexington Public Library for funding the, of the Carnegie Center at a cost not to exceed $36,000. 35, a resolution approving a form lease for lease of horses from the Friends of the Lexington Mounted Patrol Incorporated, no, Lex Lexington Mounted Police Incorporated and authorized in mayor and directing the mayor on behalf of the Urban County Government to execute such leases with the Friends of the Lexington Mounted Police Incorporated on an as-needed basis. Number 37, a resolution authorizing and directing the Division of Traffic Engineering pursuant to Code of Ordinance of Section 1886 to install multi-way stop controls at Starshoot Parkway and Pink Pigeon Parkway. Number 40, a resolution authorizing and directing the vice mayor on behalf of the urban county government to appoint a task force to assist in determining the location, siting, and design of the new facility uh, to courthouse to house the current downtown operations of the urban county government, including the preparation of any request for proposals to perform such work. And number 41. A resolution changing the street name and property address numbers of 3685, 3687, 3689, 3691, 3693, 3695, and 3697 Rear for Park Drive to suites 119, 120, 121, 122, 123, 124, and 125 Trent Boulevard, 991 Todd's Road to 919 McLean Lane, 1420 Todd's Road to 2885 Rio Dosa Drive, 2940 Todd's Road to 2700 Palumbo Drive, 3061 Todd's Road to 626 Caden Lane, 3105 Todd's Road to 2985 Liberty Road, 3109 Todd's Road to 2997 Liberty Road, 3280 Todd's Road to 203 Forest Hill Drive, 644 Forest Hill Drive to 664 Golf Town Circle, 2500 Flying Ebony Drive to 2789 Liberty Road, 2801 Richmond Road to 200 Old Todd's Road and 639 Dodge Street to 179 Payne Street. Change in the property address numbers of 1273, 1275, 1277, 1279, 1281, 1283, 1285, 1287, 1289, 1291, 1293, 1295, 1297, 1299, 1301, 1303, 1305, 1307, 
103, 102, 101, 104, 105, 106, 107, 108, 109, 110, 111, 112, 113, 114, 115, 116, 117, 118, 128, 127, and 126, and 2891 Richmond Road, Unit A, 22887 Richmond Road, and changing the street name of 2838, 2852, 2922, 2926, 2930, 2933, 2935, 2937, 2939, 2941, 2943, 2945, 2947, 2949, 2950, 2951, 2953, 2955, 2957, 2959, 2963, 2968, 2981, and 2986 Liberty Road 2. 2838, 2852, 2922, 2926, 2930, 2933, 2935, 2933, 2937, 2939, 2941, 2943, 2945, 2947, 2949, 2950, 2951, 2953, 2955, 2957, 2959, 2963, 2968, 2981, and 2986, Caden Town Road. And 150, 160, 162, Suites 110, 150, 220, 240, and 260, and 280, 163, 209, Suites 110. 1101, 1102, 30, 11, 30, 17, 30, 31, 30, 41, 30, 45, 30, 51, 30, 55, and 30, 65, 30, 69, 30, 73, 30, 77, 30, 80, 30, 81, 30, 90, 30, 94, 30, 97, 30, 98, 30, 100, and 30, 110, Todd's Row 2, 150, 160, 162, Suites 110, 150, 220, 240, 260, and 280, 163, 209, Suites 1101, 1102, 2101, 2102, 2102, 2103, 2104, 2105, 2106, 2107, 2108, 2109, 3101, 3102, 3104, 3105, 3106, 4101, 4103, 4104, 4105, 4106, 4107, 4108, 4109, 4110, 4111, 4112, 5101, 5102, 5103, 6101, 6102, 6103, 6104, 6105, 6106, 7101, 7102, 7103, 7104, and 7105. 601, 901, 920, 13, 45, 16, 20, 16, 50, 2700, 30, 11, 30, 17, 30, 31, 30, 41, 30, 45, 30, 51, 30, 55, 30, 65, 30, 69, 30, 73, 30, 77, 30, 80, 30, 81, not 30, 90, 30, 94, 30, 97, 30, 98, 30, 100, and 30, 110, Old Todd's Road, all effective 30 days from the passage. Thank you. Is there a motion to approve? Second. I have a motion by Councilmember Beard, second by Councilmember Gordon to approve those resolutions. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, we'll proceed to vote. Those in favor of those resolutions, please indicate by voting aye electronically. Those opposed, vote nay electronically. Madam Clerk, please call the roll. Mr. Beard? Aye. Mr. Blevins? Mr. Blevins? Thank you. Mr. Blues? Yes. Ms. Crosby? Yes. Mr. DeCamp? Yes. Mr. Ellinger? Ms. Gorton? Aye. Mr. Gray? Yes. Ms. Henson? Yes. Ms. James? Aye. Mr. Lane? Yes. Mr. McCord? Yes. Mr. Myers? Yes. Dr. Stevens? Aye. And Mr. Stinnett? Thank you. Those Thank you. resolutions are approved. That takes us down to item eight, communications from the mayor. Is there a motion to approve? I have a motion by Council Thank Member Myers and a second by Council Member Ellinger. Council Member Gordon. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I just wanted to bring to the council's attention number two. And this does not, my comments don't have anything to do with the person who's being recommended, but in the past, although it's not 
legally required. The council has chosen to hold confirmation hearings of Board of Adjustment and Planning Commission members so that we can inquire about conflicts of interest. And um, I would move that we um, postpone number two or remove it from the docket until we can hold a confirmation hearing. I have a motion second to uh, postpone number two until there is a confirmation hearing. Is there any further discussion? Those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed, no. Motion carries. Um, I suppose that is technically a motion to amend the original motion. So uh, we're now ready to vote on the list as now amended unless there's further discussion. Seeing none, those in favor, please vote aye. Aye. Opposed, no. Motion carries. There are a number of uh, communications for information purposes. Um, that now brings us down to item number 10, and um, that is our UDAG discussion. And um, I know Mr. Kelly is here, and I'll let, let him um, lead off and is Miss King here? Okay, couldn't see her. <coughs> and Commissioner Webb may also participate. Thank you, Mayor and Council Members. Uh, we're here this evening to, to participate in a discussion about the UDAG uh, uh, dollars and word that they are being uh, currently spent and and in conjunction with our request that the council authorize us to move forward with utilizing 1.4 million dollars of the remaining UDAG money to begin the design work for the streetscape project. Um, Ms. King is uh, is available to give you a status report on the 06 approved projects, how many dollars have been expended, <clears throat> excuse me, and how many dollars are anticipated to be left from, from those projects. And, uh, and then uh, Commissioner Webb is here to respond to any questions you might have about the streetscape project itself. So uh, with that, if it's agreeable to the council, uh, I would ask, uh, uh, Ms. King to give you an update on the on the projects that are currently underway. <clears throat> we do have, just so you can follow along, uh, a, a, an email that was uh, uh, distributed uh, some time ago, back in August, that has the project names and the dollar amounts for the project and how much at that time was anticipated to be left over. Let's go ahead. Okay, I'm sorry. Uh, basically, uh, on the list, this email is a result of some questions that uh, Councilman James had requested uh, as far as the UDAG balances that were available from the 2006 allocation. At that time, we got uh, $2.1 uh, million, and this was from the project balances that we had left as of August the 20th. Uh, we had $100,000 remaining in the Housing Authority account, which was supposed to have been used for overtime in the Bluegrass Asmodale area. Uh, of course, they no longer need that uh, money because they do not, there are no units up there and all the units have been torn down. Uh, $250,000 for Third Street, which was to be used for development plan and funds for leveraging projects based on the plan. We are in the process of doing our Third Street planning. Uh, so these funds will be used, were anticipated to be used for leveraging since we found other funds to actually do the study. 
we have available $61,599 from the Cadentown Rosenwald School Project. We spent most of that with uh, transportation enhancement dollars, and we had used some of this money to be able to complete the remaining project where we had run short. Grass Park, uh, which is a renovation of that facility, has expended about $37,000. They have about $37,359 left. They will be using those funds to continue those repairs. We have $186,000 left for ADA improvements, which were supposed to be for improvements to this building. We did do the design. Uh, there's not enough money to do any of the improvements, not to mention the fact that we're going through trying to decide what we're going to do with the building. So those funds are sitting there. Uh, Bell House uh, was for exterior painting and refurbishing. We have expended the $90,000. Downtown sidewalk replacements, uh, we have expended $444,550, which was for the mainly for the plan that you all have. Uh, and then Ann Street, which is what we use uh, UDAG funds to do the acquisition, relocation, and uh, pay for some of the other costs related to those relocation costs for that. We, we have not expended all of those funds, but we don't want to take the full balance away because we actually just did a draw request uh, to pay the last house that we tore down, uh, which was about $50,000, but we also have anticipate some additional costs with where they plan on connecting the road to Midland Avenue, and we're not sure those exact costs. Engineering is working with uh, their consultants as to how they're going to actually be doing that actual design. We don't anticipate it being major costs, but there will be some additional costs, so we don't necessarily want to take that balance down to zero just in case we have some things we need to do. But those are and the other only other funds that you all have allocated, which actually came in this spring, you all allocated four hundred and fifty thousand dollars for Georgetown Street redevelopment. Uh, that project has finally gotten the Heritage Council's okay. So we are going to be moving forward with that. So those are the projects that we have allocated uh, out of the UDAC funds, and we still have. At this point in time, $1.7 million available in UDAG funds that have not been budgeted. So if you got any questions, I'll be glad to try to answer them. Are there any questions for uh, Ms. King or the others? Mr. Blevins? I just want to make sure I'm reading this correctly, Paula. Are you saying that there's a line in here that says fund balance is not needed for projects total available 256000 that's correct. That's funds that were originally put into a project that are no longer needed. Is that number included in the 1.7 million or is that in addition to? It, it would be in addition to. So we have almost two million, yeah, almost two million dollars. That would be correct. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Council Member Lane. Yeah, just, just a point of clarification, the 186,000 for the ADA elevator and sidewalks does that now go down into the total available, or is that in addition to that? You have to add that to that if we, okay. yes. I did so, not add it because I'm, it wasn't my right. comment so to make. So that would be another 170000 or that's, so. That that's might be that's correct. Okay, thank you. Council Member Henson. Thank you. Um, I have a question about the 186000 for the government center. And so that money is there, right? It was allocated to do that project. Is yes, that correct? And so does it get reallocated? If we do not use those monies for that project, then any project that has a balance that we know that we're not going to use, we can reallocate. Yes, okay. ma'am. Because I, I really think that that's important for this building. I think. I don't know the ADA elevator, but I know we certainly need a better entrance into this building. It cannot just be, it has to be for ADA improvements. You cannot use these funds just for improvements to a government facility. Well, no, I'm talking about a facility for ADA. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Better than, well, it says ADA elevator. 
that was oh. the original intent was to do to do the elevator at the entrance actually because right now we don't really have a, a we we could I have guess a better I just way. thought a ramp would be better. <laughs> yeah, we could have a better way. I just thought a ramp would be better than an elevator. It's not my call to make. I'm okay. sorry. Okay. <laughs> sorry. And so I was just wondering and and then if but also I was thinking with the possibility of getting a new government center you know, but anyway, that's all. Okay. <laughs> Councilmember James. Thank you, Mayor. Um, Paula, do you know with the sidewalks that were indicated here, do you know where those sidewalks were located under the ADA elevator and sidewalks or government center? Where they, exactly? They would be right out front. Is that something, and that was for ADA compliance? Mm -hmm. Is yes, that something that could be done regard? I mean, that sidewalks need to be accessible as whether the government building is here or not, right? It, it's, it's an eligible cause, yes, ma'am. Could we move forward with that project, the sidewalks? If you also choose. Um, well, I guess that's my question, is how do, who's choosing which projects move forward now? I believe at, what basically happened with the ADA improvements for this facility is, is they actually were put on hold because we didn't know what we were going to be doing with, with this facility. So that's why they just stopped. So if you're saying that, that that you want to proceed forward with with some of the, the sidewalk improvements, I don't know if they've been dissolved. Commissioner okay. Cole, I think, wants to speak on that. Thank you. Yes, actually, we put the, the elevator project, which included a new entrance, um, sidewalks, and an elevator out for bid. It came back about twice what we had budgeted for the project, so then it was put on hold. Um, so that was done earlier this year, so we put it on hold as we studied what we wanted to do with this building. The likelihood of a new, per, a new owner of this building wanting to put this particular functional elevator right in the front entrance, which is what we were proposing, is probably not very likely. And, I, and I'm, I'm speaking, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm, I'm not speaking to the elevator. I was speaking to the sidewalks. Okay, the, the sidewalk that was part of that project was just to redo the entrance right in front to give handicap accessibility through our front entrance. But we've got the steps as you come in so it wouldn't, um, it doesn't make sense to just do the sidewalk right there. It was to lead it into the building. Are there any sidewalks in downtown Lexington that are not ADA compliant? I don't know the answer to that. Okay, because I'd like to see that those funds used towards the ADA compliant sidewalks. Okay. So if we can, you know, pursue that, that okay. I would like to see an allocation. Maybe that 186 thousand and put towards that, and maybe it's included in the downtown downtown streetscape design. I see Mike standing up behind you. Maybe that is, but you know. Yeah, um, I would support that money going towards ADA compliance of sidewalks. Okay, um, I am. I would anticipate that the streetscape, the sidewalks are ADA compliant, um, but I I can't speak to our current sidewalks and, and okay. the plans. Thank you, Mike. Is the the one point four million um, that's being requested for the streetscape? I guess design, is that what you're requesting for the, for the design of the streetscape? Yes, the, okay. there's different components of the design. Uh, there are, is a design that will be done for the actual sidewalk and street improvements, but there's also design in there to move aerial utilities underground. That design has to be done also. Okay. So both of those components are in there. And so, um, and underground's not going to happen at every location where sidewalks will be done. No, in fact, there are some areas where the utilities are already underground and you wouldn't have any cost for that type of design in those areas, in those particular projects. If you look from Broadway to Lyme on Main, Main Street, there wouldn't be any utility design cost built in to that million four hundred thousand. Okay, is that, is the 1.4 for the entire design of everything? That's actually uh, the five priority projects that you heard Cleet speak about each time that he came uh, before the planning committee. Those ones that uh, there was consensus on that need that need to go first. That's for the design of those. 
uh, actually have a list if you want me to step back. I have that if, if okay. that's what you're you talking about. Yeah. I was just asking if, if yes, that, that was for the complete. Yes, that includes design components for all of those. And within those five priorities, how much have to, how many of those have to do with sidewalks? Just sidewalks alone and making sure we have passable and accessible sidewalks. Cheapside would include a little bit more than sidewalks because it included Cheapside Park in addition to the sidewalk on Cheapside. When you look at, by name, Main Street, Vine Street, Limestone, all those include sidewalks, including intersections, which we do have a large problem. Uh, our intersections are not all ADA compliant, so it would include that component of making those actual intersections and where the crosswalks are mm -hmm. ADA compliant as mm -hmm. well as the sidewalk itself. Okay. And this question might be for Joe Kelly. Is this or for um, Paula actually? Is this our last UDAG payment? Yes, ma'am. Okay. So what we're working with now is about 1.9 million dollars with about for balance. And, and, and let me clarify, it's our last UDAC payment for Fast for Market. We continue to get monthly payments for Victorian Square. Okay. What happens with those payments when they come those in? Those funds are being allocated as match for the home project. Okay. It provides our, our match for home. Okay. All right. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you, Mayor. Anything further? Seeing nothing, we'll proceed. Uh, are there any further announcements from the council? All right, that takes us down to our last agenda item, which is uh, public comment. And um, I have, I think, one person who has signed up, Mr. McCarthy. If you'll step to the podium, you'll have three minutes. Your Honor and members of the council, there are several things that strike me as mistakes. Number one, item 37 under resolutions, when you're putting multi-way stop controls at an intersection of two four-lane divided streets, I think it would be much more sensible to put a signal at that intersection where Pink Pigeon cross intersects Starshoot because this would be, well, when you get multi-lane roads, it's kind of difficult for everybody to keep straight who got to the multi-way stop first. For one thing, for another, it takes more, it causes the vehicles to burn more fuel just to put them back in motion after they've stopped. I really would rather we got rid of as many multi-way stops around town and put in signals in their place or perhaps roundabouts in some cases to conserve fuel. Then also, I think the proposals to replace this building, I shudder at the thought of how much money that's going to cost. I would really rather that this government try to keep this building patched together instead of tearing down other buildings nearby that may actually be in better shape than this one to build the replacement while this one is being used in the meantime. And it bugs me that I've heard proposals for replacing Rupp Arena. As far as I know that you still haven't paid off all the bonds on the last reconstruction of the Civic Center, I don't think you should be going in debt to build a new replacement when you haven't paid off what's out there. And when it comes to the well, to, well, when it comes to what you're spending money on, if you're really eager to borrow yourselves eyeball deep in debt and spend the money to try to jumpstart the economy, I would suggest instead of spending it on replacing buildings, you put it into other stuff that has to be done like perhaps speeding up the repair and upgrades of the sewer system. Thank you, Mr. McCarthy. Does anyone else wish to address the council? Mr. Cobb? 
If you'll step to the podium, you'll have three minutes. Obama, first giving honor to God, thanking him for his mercy and his power, showing me the, snow, the rain today, the floods, what it was. Thank him for allowing me to come through that I was in the car, and the car started hydroplaning. And the people who I was in the car with, they was nervous, but I wasn't even nervous. Thank him for the peace that he gave me. Uh, I came here tonight to thank some people. Uh, Chuck Ellinger, you got to shine. I appreciate that, man. Appreciate that. I want to thank the other uh, councilmen who got to shine earlier. You know, it's, it's a privilege for me to shine y'all's shoes because I know how y'all feeling, the pressure is building, and y'all going to need y'all shines in the future. Uh, tonight, Lexington is uh, challenged to forgive one another. I'm glad I got a heart to forgive. I'm not mad at anybody today. My life has been threatened. I've been put in jail eight or nine, ten times. I got uh, jumped by a skinhead in front of the blue building. It don't matter. When you got, when you got a mission, you got to do your mission. So I'm asking the whole Lexington tonight to do something different and pray. I'm asking Ray Lawson to get on his knees and pray. I'm asking the mayor to get on his knees and pray. I'm asking everybody to get on their knees and pray. And, and watch how we wake up tomorrow. The situation in front of us is incredible. But it ain't nothing that these guys got to answer for. We got a moral problem in our community. When I come in here, I fall on my knees to the most high because he protects me. When y'all sleep, I'm out walking around in the city. We got children that need help. I need a building where I can come in and change young, transform boys' lives, change, turn them into shiners, the future leaders. We can't give up on nobody. We got to ask everybody to be a part of it. I need y'all to help, let me shine your shoes. It take a minute. Cost you a little humility. I'm going to try to be nice. Sometimes I'm not. You know, I go through a lot. I ask y'all to forgive me. If I've done anything to offend anybody in Lexington, forgive me. But the show got to go on, baby. It takes everybody. Everybody's important. I'm not going to overlook nobody. One day, I think we should have a, a, a day where maybe the mayor, the vice mayor, they have to come downtown in a wheelchair so you can see what handicapped people go through. You know, it, it broadens your perspective when you can put your shoes feet in somebody else's shoes. And when you do that, when you put your feet in somebody else's shoes, please let me shine them. Thank you. Thank you very much. Is there anything further? That concludes our agenda. A motion to adjourn is in order. I have a motion by Council Member Count, uh, Crosby and a second by Council Member sure. Gordon. All in favor, please say aye. aye. Motion carries, thank you. Okay.